Um, yeah. Another thing that recently came out on social media, which was awesome, um, was uh, a little preview from Pillars of Hercules, the documentary. That was yes. also super exciting, um, especially because it's talking about John Lennon. Like, yeah. I love John. Le I mean, who doesn't love John Lennon? But the Beatles hold a really special place in my heart, as they will for many listeners. So, yeah, um, for those listeners who don't know, you know, you, you were you were kind of talking about the night at Madison Square Garden, right? When when he joined you on stage. Yes. Right. And then Unbelievable. you guys started hanging out quite a lot after. Yes. Well, actually, we hung out. Well, we hung out after that particular and before show. Before Caribbean. Fact, well, we'd been together for since July of that year, and um, the concert was in Thanksgiving, so the end of November. And uh, yeah, I, it was just we all got on so well, and he came on tour with us quite a lot. Mm -hmm. So we became great friends, and um, I, I play him music. I was a to you know at that time in 1974 and Ry Cooter and Al Green which is a one of my favorite albums of all time the Call Me album uh, and they're all from 1974 you know and uh, so we we exchange stuff and so I would turn him on to new stuff and then in in in, in return he would tell me something about the way the Beatles recorded a track wow. so. I was get, I was getting to be a real groupie and, and ask him some great questions <laughs> I've always wondered about. So yeah, John and I became really close. And after that show, after that show at the Garden, uh, Elton called me up. Uh, I don't know if I told you this on our last yeah, I think meeting. I, I think I remember that he he called you up to hang out with him, right? Exactly. So John came over and and we just spent the next six or seven hours having a lot of fun and playing music. And, you know, ironically, that's actually the last time I saw him because um, that was in 1974, December, well, in November, December. And um, we didn't actually come into contact. We didn't see each other. You know, we exchanged a couple of uh, things and letters and stuff. And when he was recording Double Fantasy, I was in New York in the summer of that year, and um, I sent a message to him to, via his people at the, at the studio, and I got a lovely message back from Yoko saying, yeah, we'd love to see you, but we're right in the middle of this thing, and, and I was leaving the next day, so it was like, no problem, love you guys, and see you around, not knowing that later that year he was going to be shot, so it was just... Um, Terrible, it means all yeah. the more to me. And I don't know if you know this, but the way this clip that you were talking about that, that Tam directed and put out um, from the Pillars of Hercules. Um, he called me just last week when I was doing um, another thing. I was doing a track for my friend, uh, David Page of oh, Toto yeah. fame. I'm a huge a Toto fan. We've had oh, Steve man. Lucifer and Joseph Williams on the podcast. They're, they're, they're great. They're just the best. Yeah. They're, the, they're the greatest. I mean, I love those guys and, and what amazing writers and musicians, you know. Super, and yeah. um, so, so I was doing this thing for David and Charlie and I are working away. Tam calls and says, I need a favor. And I'm going, OK, what? He says, well, can you recreate all your guitar parts and sitar stuff on Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds? Because I want to do a quick release of it. And it will save us asking Universal for the rights. And I was like, oh, shit. And I said, well, sure, why not? I'll do that. So we finished the David Page track, which he loved, by the way. It was great. David's a dear friend. And wow. then we went straight into, straight into recreating Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds, our version from 1974. And it was amazing remembering these parts, which I remembered them all really well because I, I do have a good musical memory for that stuff. I guess that's why I'm Elton's um, musical director because I know I remember all the parts you know yeah and we, we recreated all those parts in in a few hours and then uh, myself Charlie and Elliot uh, the youngest of my clan uh, we did the the choruses we sang the choruses so yeah I I was absolutely knocked out by that because I did read below because at first first when I listened to it I was like oh they used, used Lucy in the Sky Diamonds like the Elton version and I was like, wait a minute, like this documentary hasn't come out and they probably haven't, you know, like speaking to Universal and stuff about that stuff is a complete nightmare, I'm imagining. But it, <laughs> okay. I thought it was the real thing. But I mean, did, where did you record that at home and stuff? 
next door. It just yeah. sounds like exactly exactly the same. Yeah, I mean, I, I think nowadays because of all the great advances in technology, especially in music, plugins and stuff for recording, stuff like that, yeah. you can revert to sounds and rooms that you may have been in back then. And it's just so amazing. And as I said, Charlie, my, uh, my wonderful piano playing engineer, producing son, uh, has got it down so well that we just, we can do things, we can do whole tracks and the, like the way I used to record stuff, um, you know, you get the first pass, it's usually the best. And then you move on and do something else. And yeah, I've been really blessed that I can record so much from home during this home pandemic. And actually doing the Lucy track has made me realize that, you know what, for the documentary, I'm probably gonna end up doing a lot of that where I record yeah. it myself, you know, and uh, 